Hi students, this is Shayan and welcome to my biology class. Today we will discuss about gel electrophoresis. This is an important topic at class 12 standard or onward in biological science. If you want to have a quick view over this topic, want to score high in the exam with some easy but high standard notes from an experienced teacher, you must watch this video till the end. So let's begin. Let's start with its definition. Gel electrophoresis is a standard technique commonly used in the lab to separate charged molecules according to their size. What is charged molecules? By the term charged molecules we actually mean DNA, RNA, protein, etc. And what type of charge it may possess, whether it is positive or negative, it will always move to the opposite pole, to the opposite pole. So, this is the basis of gel electrophoresis. Now, let us know about the types of the gel electrophoresis. Generally, gel electrophoresis are of three types. Agarose gel electrophoresis, here the gel is prepared by agar agar, a polysaccharide extracted from algae. And this type of gel electrophoresis generally performed for DNA, RNA, protein gel electrophoresis, where the substrates are generally smaller in size. Next type is polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, also known as PAGE. And this type of gel is prepared by a mixture of chemical substance known as acrylamide and bisacrylamide. So, it is a mixture of these two compounds. PAGE is a relatively more precise electrophoresis than the agarose gel electrophoresis. Here, DNA, protein, etc. are electrophoresis with relatively larger size and this technique can precisely separate the DNA or protein segments. The third type is starch gel electrophoresis. Here, the gel is prepared with the help of potato starch. And this type of electrophoresis is generally performed for protein. So, these are the different types of gel electrophoresis. Now, let us move to the discovery or history of the process. Who discovered this technique? This technique was first discovered by Swedish biochemist Arne Thelius. He discovered this process in the year of 1937 and he was awarded Nobel for this discovery in the year of 1948. So, let us move to our next topic. Now, let us know about its principle. In this technique, charged molecules like DNA, RNA or protein migrate on the basis of their size under the influence of an electric field. The next point of principle is, with the electric current, a positive or negative end is created across the gel. So, at the both end of the gel, a positive end and negative end respectively will be created by the help of this electric current. Next point, charged molecule that means DNA, RNA or protein will migrate to the opposite charge through the gel. So, they can move through the gel. Next point, the gel consists of permeable matrix as I have earlier mentioned that like a sieve through which molecules can travel when an electric current is passed across it. And the last point but not the least, smaller molecules will migrate more quickly than the larger ones and thus they get separated by their size. So, remember always students, in gel electrophoresis, the charged particles will always get separated from each other by their size, not by their charge. We can easily draw a simile to understand this last point. Suppose for individual, First person is moving or trying to move in a truck. Second person is trying to move in a car. Third one is trying to move with the help of his bike. And the last individual is moving on his walk, on his leg. Okay. And all of them are trying to move through a crowded road. 
what will happen we will easily find that the individual who is walking on his leg will definitely reach the other end much more easier than these three individuals like that the smaller particles of the charged molecules will move to the other end much faster than the larger one this is the principle of the gel electrophoresis now let's move to the next topic let's know about its procedure with the help of this two simple diagram here it is a plastic made box known as electrophoresis tank and within this box we have to put the gel gel which is already being mixed with the buffer solution here there are three or four or more than that type of sample wells these are kind of holes through which we have to add the samples samples of charged particles which will actually move through these gels and on the opposite side both of the side of the tank uh, there are two electrodes which are connected with the help of a wires to a power supply machine so here the cathode and here the anode and through this technique we are actually about to uh, electrophoresis of dna so we are going to understand the process of agarose gel electrophoresis through this diagram what we have to do at first we have to take any sample a sample of dna then the sample must be cut down into small fragments with the help of restriction endonuclease after the digestion of restriction endonuclease the dna long dna strand will get converted into small fragments and then these fragments of dna have to put into this well so sample well number 1 actually contain sample 1 likewise we can also add sample 2 sample 3 into the respective wells what after that after putting the samples into the respective wells we have to allow some times to undergo the process of electrophoresis so after 1 hour or 2 hour we have to extract the gel out of the solution of buffer and then we have to add some probe here for the purpose of dna electrophoresis we will add a non radioactive probe ethidium bromide it is a non radioactive probe it will show the presence of dna by changing its color we have to then wash out the excess amount of probe bound with the gel so wash out the excess probe and then finally we have to place the gel under the uv ray whenever you will place the gel under the uv ray you will definitely be able to see different short fragments of dna in orange color so there will be different dna in this gel which can be shown whenever this entire gel is placed under the uv radiation these orange dots are actually the binding site of ethidium bromide with that of dna and thus after electrophoresis of dna we can isolate the presence of dna from the gel so this is the procedure of electrophoresis at last we will know about the application of the gel electrophoresis the first application the gel electrophoresis is generally performed for restriction mapping of dna and it is generally done to separate dna of different size after restriction enzyme digestion the next application may be gel electrophoresis is used for analysis of pcr products as in case of genetic diagnosis the next application may be it is useful tool for dna fingerprinting the dna fingerprinting process has been earlier described and uh, i am giving the link at the cart so you can follow that video too so from that video we will also know about the use of gel electrophoresis in the process of dna fingerprinting and the next and last this process it can also be performed prior to blotting so whatever substance you are trying to blot whether it is dna through southern blotting whether it is rna through northern blotting or it is protein through western blotting you have to undergo the gel electrophoresis prior to these blotting techniques 
So at the end we can conclude that uh, the entire gel electrophoresis is a useful tool, useful tool for forensic science, for molecular biology, for genetics, for microbiology and biochemistry respectively. So, this technique is very useful in different stream of biology. So, hope with this uh, the, uh, with the help of this video students get enough clear idea over the entire process of gel electrophoresis. Thanks and bye.